So, you want to stream on a Mac, but how to do it? All you need is one fine device, a bundle of most common apps, and you are good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to use comments. So, from scratch, I will show you how to set up a streaming software, how to use the application synchronization with the Twitch or any app you want to stream in. Then the largest pane, which is sound recording setup, because if you want to record your desktop to your computer or if you want to stream the sound from it, it's really an issue on a Mac. Then we will take a look at the scenes design, alert setup, and in the end, we will try to stream some tests on the Twitch. So let's get to it. So in case of the streaming software, I'm using the OBS. It's a shortcut for open broadcaster software. Uh, I'm using this software because it's really simple and it's possible to update it how you like. So after you install this app, this is how it looks like. Uh, you can download this app in the link in the description. If you open it for the first time, it would look like this. But I recommend you to use the studio mode. And the reason is pretty simple. Because right now I see just one screen and this is what is live. So if I change to desktop or to something else, this is how it looks. Uh, but in the studio mode, if I switch to something, uh, you will see always the same thing until I click here on the transition. So as you can see, when I click on the transition, the transition is happening in here and uh, it will switch the screen. Uh, so you can edit the screen uh, in the future, even in the time you're streaming. You got me thinking, whoa, whoa. So if I open the settings and th th this, is, this is the tab that you want to look at the first time when you open the app, of course you can set the theme and all these kind of stuff. Uh, so I want to point out some features that are pretty handy. The first one, is in the general tab here is a snapping guide uh, what is ha happening here it's like a magnet that helps you with snapping some objects which are you setting up in the in the scene uh, i set it up to 10.5 but set up whatever you like and what it does when you have some objects that are not locked uh, like this info i can take a look and i can move it out of course and the snapping feature looks like this. When I put it to corner or to side or to the top, it will magnify there. The next step, most important one, is the stream one. Uh, here you will set up where you want to stream in. So for in, in, my, in my case, I'm streaming to Twitch. It's more simpler than it was in the past. Right now you will just cho choose the service that you want to stream in. But if you want to choose something else, there is a custom service. So you will type the server and the stream key. The next step is an output. This is all about your internet connection and all about the recording. So for streaming, I set up uh, 2050 kilobytes per second. Uh, I have it from another video and it works pretty fine. Also, you can set a record path when you are uh, recording videos. If you are cutting the videos on a Mac, uh, save it as a MOV format because in that case you are able to add it in the Final Cut Pro and in the video you can see everything is shadowed over here. The reason is because I'm right now recording the video for you. Uh, but my setup is for Full HD. I'm uh, recording in Full HD and also I'm streaming in Full HD so you can set up the resolution you want. But if your computer setup is different, for example, you have 4K display. In that case, you will choose the 4K here. And here is the output for streaming and recording. So here you will choose the full HD that you want to stream or the 4K, whatever you want. Okay, so that was a streaming software. To create a scene, click on a plus button. Let's say this is disk. Top two. Also, you can some add some emojis to it. Doesn't matter. Okay, so this is our desktop two. Uh, at first, I, I want a display capture. I have already one existing, 
but you can create another one like this and you will choose the display that you want to use right now I'm using this one so I will tick on OK so I can resize the window because I turn the magnet it will just show up like this and I can lock it it's better to lock it so next one you want to add some sound so right now we will put the mic in and that's also pretty simple so you will choose the mic that you want to use uh, in my case it's Yeti stereo microphone and then you want the thing that is actually the problem as you can see here I have a different sound here one is desktop sound one is the microphone so you have one input and one output the problem is on a Mac that this output the desktop sound it's not like pre-installed you have to do it for this I have installed the app which is in the description and it's called Soundflower so after you install this app you will see these two outputs in here and when uh, you're adding the sound after you install the Soundflower choose it as an output in here and then choose it as an output in here what this will do is that will record all the sound to your stream or to your recording so right now we are set up but there is one more problem because right now if I have the output set up in here the problem is when I play a video or I play a game I will not hear anything in this in this case so you have to use an app which you can find in a utility apps called audio MIDI setup this app is for a lot of things but what I'm using is is to put some outputs together you will just click here on the create button and you will create multi output device then you will choose what you want in here and then you will click uh, and close I have created this one it's called streaming sound so I will switch to that and in this case my airpods will hear the sound so I will hear the sound and also my computer when it's streaming hear the sound so large problem it's possible to solve it in this way as you can see uh, I have a lot of scenes like the desktop like the desktop watching and also I have this pause and start stream and end stream uh, animations okay let's start with this one because, because these ones are the most simplest one even it doesn't look like that uh, this is this is a video which I have created by myself so you will add the video the path to the video and it's playing in the loop or you can set up just some picture or something else whatever you want okay the desktop we have just set up so this is already solved so the most hardest is actually this scene with uh, the desktop and also the camera design with his rounded corners but it's not really that difficult that it looks like so as you can see here I have an object which is this mask and it's a picture that looks like that I created in Photoshop this mask and it's like a PNG file you can download this in description if you want under this there is a the desktop which is a little bit smaller so this is how it looks like but the hardest thing is uh, if you want to set up this uh, this rounded camera so you will add a camera in here and you will set it up as you want it the tab that you want to look into is the filters two most important filters in here the first one and let's start with this one is a mask and I'm using pretty simple mask which is in my files I created also in Photoshop and this is how it looks like it's a PNG file with two squares one is rounded uh, one is white and one is black and I export it as a PNG file and I'm using it like a mask so when you add the path to it you will choose this color channel and after that you will choose the color that you want to disappear uh, also there is an opacity for some reason but I'm not using it 
So if you if you set it up, it will look something like this. So there are rounded corners at the top and the bottom, but it's not what I want, of course. So this is what is the crop tab for. So as you can see, it's it's hidden right now, but if I unhide it, it will crop the image. And what is actually doing it, it's just cropping the image from the webcam uh, in something. I, I believe it's pixels, but I don't know. And I find it out by trying that 280 in my case when I'm using this square is perfect and right now I have this rounded corner camera and it looks pretty cool. So let's take a look at the alerts design. So I'm gonna switch to desktop so you can see it. So I'm using an app called Streamlabs. You can just log into it, it's free. You can set up the alert boxes in here. So here is my dashboard and if you click on the alert boxes uh, you will get to this view. If you want to set it up, you will choose the browser in here. Let's just call it browser right now. Here you can see the URL file. So you can, you will copy this file and you will paste your URL, which you cannot see right now. As you can see, I have an invisible object in here, but this is what we want because right now, I have already set up here with an alert box uh, name. So right now, as you can see, if I try to test out, Dylan. You son of a... this is a test. Also, there is possibility to set up the colors, to set up the text, uh, the, the delay, uh, and everything you want to set up. Uh, I can add a video, I can add a photo, you can change uh, the text in here, you can use the smart values and you can set it up as you want. But for now, we have set it up all the scenes and alerts. So we are set up right now, let's try a stream. So when I open the OBS, the first thing that I have to check is all my transitions and all these uh, scenes if everything is right and working uh, because right now i have my streaming folder on the cloud so i am checking if everything is downloaded and if it's not downloaded uh, like this stream ending video or something uh, the obs show me that, that there is a file missing so everything is connected but my stream will start with not this screen but I believe it will start with this screen which is saying okay we're starting in a minute. So right now I can start the stream, move the OBS to the second display because that's what you should do. Alright so I can turn on this. And let's put it to the full screen. Of course the sound is really loud. So let's put it like this and let's hit the play. Also when you are streaming for the first time I would recommend you to have the FPS option turned on to see how the stream is running. If everything is okay as you can see right now I have 28 FPS to 30 FPS which is, which is not much and that's actually because I also use some shaders in this game. So in that case, it will be really good to have some solution for that. In this case, I can just use the native skin that I have in the game, but you should reduce the settings in that case, which I have done right now. And now you can see I have 40 to 47, 45, and it's working pretty well. Also, I'm checking the stream if there are not drop frames. My internet is going pretty good, so everything is ongoing and it's good. Also, if you want to double check, let's check the website because the stream is recorded and the stream is in here. If everything is okay, as you can see right now, I have 28 FPS to 30 FPS, which is, which is not much. Okay, so I showed you how to stream on a Mac today. Thank you for watching. And if you want to support me, leave a like below. It will help me. And see you in the next one.